MOLAB. Let me talk you through what we do with the MOLAB. Um, this is the basic reaction we are going to take. Sodium bicarbonate, which is more commonly known as baking soda, we will be reacting with, with hydrochloric acid, which is a dilute solution of hydrochloric acid, and we will get a replacement reaction. Actually, this is an exchange reaction. We'll actually get the uh, hydrogen and the sodium to exchange positions. So we get uh, carbonic acid and sodium chloride. The carbonic acid, um, in the presence of this HCl concentration, decomposes to carbon dioxide and water. The uh, sodium chloride will be there aqueous. What we really want to do is weigh out how much sodium bicarbonate we start with and then actually um, take the NaCl and isolate the NaCl by uh, boiling away the water that's left in the test tube. The carbon dioxide has already gone off as a gas and we will then weigh the amount of sodium chloride that we have. If you look at the chemical reaction, this is a balanced chemical reaction, uh, which you see here on your paper, and this is actually a one-to-one -one ratio in moles. So you should see that the grams are different, but the moles are really going to be quite close. One of the things you will need to do is calculate the molar mass of both the sodium bicarbonate and the sodium chloride. And so there's a space to do that, and you should feel comfortable with calculating the molar mass. Um, the rest of the positions are for the information that you see from the information that you see from these pictures. You would zero the balance and then you would weigh your empty test tube. You then want to fill that test tube with somewhere between a half, somewhere around a half a gram of sodium bicarbonate. So here's our test tube plus the sodium bicarbonate. What you should notice is we've never weighed the sodium bicarbonate separately, but we weighed the test tube with and without the sodium bicarbonate. So you will find that, that the difference in these two will give you the amount of sodium bicarbonate that you started with. Now you are asked to find the number of moles. Well, this information is in grams, but this information is in moles, and your molar mass will be the number of grams per one mole, and this is your conversion factor that will allow you to switch the mass of sodium bicarbonate into grams of sodium bicarbonate. Now, everything in red is done after you um, do the experiment. So what we're going to do is take dropper-wise and add drops of the hydrochloric acid to our sodium bicarbonate that's in the test tube. And you will see that it will bubble up, and I think that you may have already done this experiment, but this is like adding vinegar to sodium bicarbonate or to baking soda. It will bubble. Well, we'll keep doing this until you use up all of the sodium bicarbonate, and then you should have a clear, transparent, colorless solution. This colorless solution is basically the aqueous sodium chloride. So at this point, you want to evaporate the water in that test tube. And so we will be heating that test tube over a Bunsen burner flame carefully. These are test tube holders here. We have the test tube pointed away from us. And with time, you actually evaporate this to dryness. One of the ways you can test it is to hold a test tube over it and if you see any condensation forming you know that there is still uh, water in that test tube. But finally you get um, the dry sodium chloride um, buildup. 
you would want to let that cool just a bit so that it is room temperature and you will reweigh it. So this is now the mass of the test tube plus now the sodium chloride. You want to subtract out the test tube's mass. Well, you already have that test tube's mass because you've got the empty test tube. So these two pieces of information are the same. This difference now gives you the mass of sodium chloride in grams, which you need to convert to moles because you have already calculated the number of grams per mole or the molar mass of sodium chloride. So finally, you're asked for the mole ratio. So you will want to take the moles of sodium chloride and divide them by, whoops, the moles of sodium bicarbonate and divide them by the moles of sodium chloride. And this will give you your theoretical ratio. Whatever you get for this division will go in this box right here. Now, just to make sure that you keep track of some things, whenever you are converting into moles, make sure you use three significant figures. You will probably have a number that looks like this. And that would be one significant figure. You will need a total of three digits here. So make sure that you carry it to three digits. And then you can have three digits here with your ratio. Um, here is a spot for you to actually do the calculations of moles. So you would have the grams and multiply that by the moles per gram, which is 1 over your molar mass. Um, you should have something that is close to 1 to 1, but it is not exactly 1 to 1 because you're actually using an experiment to do this. And so you have some uncertainty in all of your measurements, plus the possibility that you may have uh, bubbled some material out of your test tube. There's several other things that could happen. Your test tube might not be dry when you weigh it. So there's several other things that can happen. So this is what you should expect for this lab, and this is how you should work on going through um, the calculations. This is a chance that you get to actually experimentally convert grams into moles using the molar mass and make sure you use the appropriate molar mass for either the sodium bicarbonate or the NaCl.